For the ones who get it done, the most important part is the one you need now. And the best partner is the one who can deliver. That's why millions of maintenance and repair pros trust Granger, Because we have professional-grade supplies for every industry, even hard-to-find products. And we have same-day pickup and next-day delivery on most orders. But most importantly, we have an unwavering commitment to help keep you up and running. Call, click Granger.com, or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. Judy was boring. Hello. Then Judy discovered Jumbacasino.com. It's my little escape. Now Judy's the life of the party. Oh, baby, mama's bringing home the bacon. Whoa, take it easy, Judy. <laughs> The Chumba Life is for everybody. So go to ChumbaCasino.com and play over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. He may have a game plan. He just hasn't shared it with me. But I tell you what, I don't know about you, but I'm going to go to bed. All right. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to the program. I am absolutely thrilled that you are here like I always am. I have a co-host today. Uh, My co-host is Shaman Isis, and she's all smiles. Shaman, what's up? Thank you so much for being the co-host today. Absolutely. Um, What we're going to talk about, if you've never checked out the program before, we are primarily uh, commentary, and uh, we do interviews here. Today, this is going to be kind of a commentary podcast, and we're going to talk about politics. And that's one that uh, can scare a lot of people. Um, But, you know, you got to be able to talk about things. And uh, Shaman, I don't know how you would classify yourself. I'm certainly an independent, um, conservative, uh, liberal by today's standards. Uh, I can't really identify with either one. Yeah. My personal opinion is is that uh, the 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 meter on crazy go uh, went into the red more often with conservatives back in two thousand eight. Now it seems like the the crazy meter has a tendency to go into the red a little bit more on the left. Mm. Um, but nonetheless, I don't identify with either one. Do you want to preface your yeah. view? I'm middle of the road. I don't identify with either one of them. They became so disconnected to me from the average person and from the real issues going on in the world and in the country that I just, you know, got frustrated and said, you know what, I'm just going to be an independent. Yeah. I'm I'm totally with you there. This is one of the, I'll also preface our conversation today with this. There have been different times in history, uh, I'll say modern history, uh, during my lifetime, let's say Ronald Reagan and forward, uh, even the 70s. There were people that disagreed a lot and um, Democrats and Republicans always were at each other's throats, so to speak. Um, the, the, you know, Ronald Reagan and uh, the, the, uh, Tip O'Neill uh, had some pretty famous disagreements. But somehow or other, they both lived in the same reality. You know, they, 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 they realized that they both were aware that the sky is above, it's blue. Uh, and, but now we're entering a, uh, and this is relatively new. I don't remember this happening before. The last five years in particular, we are entering a time when people not only have their own opinions, but they have their own facts. They have their own uh, reality. Uh, would you agree with that? Oh, absolutely. I, I think it's it's one of the, the gifts of having everyone be a, their own media is that they um, that they can go based on algorithms. They can get delivered the opinion that they have begun to show interest in, and then it gets solidified. And the next thing you know, they're living on a planet that's not Earth. Yes, absolutely, and. It's gotten to the point now where, you know, the phrase that I never liked when I heard it and it started with cable news was news you can use, (laughs) which which translated into news you agree with Mm -hmm. and news that keeps you happy and watching serial commercials. And um, with the advent of social media, this has been exacerbated now by, you know, following people that you like. It's getting to the point where you... uh, 
don't necessarily follow or tolerate anyone in your timeline that you disagree with. You block them, straight up block them. You don't want to even hear an opposing opinion. So um, uh, to be honest, as we talk about politics today, we're going to talk about some of the candidates and just in general, we're going to get Shaman's reaction and I'll throw in my two cents when possible. But um, we're in a time where, uh, quite frankly, if, if I was a politician, I would be kind of perplexed as to how to appeal to an audience that really is accustomed to hearing what they want to hear. Yeah. They don't necessarily want to hear the solutions any more than the politicians want to give them. Yeah. So that's kind of where I'm at. Uh, yeah. you, can I share a story with you? Absolutely. Really quick? Go right ahead. Uh, yesterday I posted the Shaman Isis show podcast and I did an opening talking about the fact that uh, Nancy Pelosi had said that she was going to be running again. And I was, you know, we talked about this. I was sl sort of slaying the whole, you know, aged politician situation that we've gotten ourselves into. And somebody reshared my podcast and just went off on how how horrible it was that I chose a particular person. And I mean, yeah. they really did. They did it three different places. And I was like, you need to ask yourself why you're coming after someone for expressing a personal opinion in a show that's their own name. Yes. <laughs> I mean, in, in, in what it was interesting to me was that they what they did was they took what they listened to and they assigned uh, a party to me. They assigned a political position to me and and implied several things about my politics that I'm not even that open about. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, oh, well, I'm glad, you know, exactly. Uh, and that's that's kind of where we're at. You know, um, we're in a uh, we have a moral compass, too. Like for me, me, for example, uh, to me, a given action is either right or it's wrong in simple terms. With the left in particular, it depends on who's involved, who's doing it to whom. Um, some people are, are justified in doing bad things. Um, and both sides will excuse their quote unquote candidate or politician for doing certain things and in the same situation condemn another for doing oh, yeah. the same thing it's and, very narcissistic uh, yeah and it's uh we have a more moral compass now that doesn't point in the direction of right or wrong it points in well it depends on who it is and what their reason is uh and that's a, that, that's a scary uh scary thing to um to to those kind of times scare me is what i'm trying to say yeah. All right, uh, let's start with the guy that's there now, uh, Joe Biden. I, I want to be very clear here. Um, I'm not necessarily saying anything directly related to age because we have to bring that up. Well, we get into this thing about ageism and so on and so forth. Uh, Bernie Sanders, for whatever reason, uh, whether you agree with him or not, sharp as a pin, absolutely sharp as a pin. Joe Biden, not so much. Um, I, I presume a lot of people have heard the soundbite the other day where he was uh, in, in, a, in a press conference and he said, listen, I don't know about you, but I'm going to bed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm so, sorry. Uh, I, 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 it's gotten to the point now where you can't tell his quotes from the onion. No, uh, you can't. You, you can't. can't. And and in what I've seen with Joe, I'm sorry. Finish what you were saying. Oh no, no. Well, that's kind of where where I was at. I um, I can remember when Ronald Reagan, when 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 Democrats tried to make his age an issue. And in all fairness, um, I think his first term very sharp, very sharp. He was always funny. He was called the great communicator. Second term, for the most part, uh, knowing what we know now about what was going on with him that last year. If you go back and look at some news clips from 1987 when he was in his last year, you could tell he was starting to slip just a little bit. And that's not mm. being mean, but that's, no, that's, the it. Truth. that's the honest to God truth. Yeah. And Ronald Reagan left office younger than Joe Biden went in. Yeah. And if he wins in 2024, uh, he, that means he will be in an office, in essence, another five years on top of where we're at now. Yeah. Um, so this is uh, kind of where we're at. I don't know that 
this is a good thing for the country. No. I listen no. into some of the foreign media talking about the United States and uh, it's... Um, it's not good. It's not good. No, it's the first time in my life, and I have mad respect for the office of the president. Yeah. I have respect for anybody who does such a challenging job. And having said that, it is an incredibly high stress, challenging job that requires Absolutely. someone who has uh, a sufficient amount of energy and intellect and interest to be able to do the job as well as possible. And we're already seeing in this term him struggle. And in addition to that, we're losing the respect of the international audience and politicians in other countries because they see it for what it is. And they're talking about it in a very openly that, you know, age is really, really is a number, but we age differently. All of us as we get mm -hmm. older and some of us age super well and stay sharp and, and some of us don't. And, and some of his gaffes have, have embarrassed the country. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're a Democrat right now, you got to know when you're in the background. Uh, and here again, I want to stress this as a human being. Uh, I'm, I, I kind of kind of feel that he, for lack of a better term, he was kind of a goof his whole career. Um, but that aside, uh, the aging situation has come into. I do have empathy for him as a human being. I don't want to see anybody in an uncomfortable situation. I don't want to see anybody in a vulnerable situation. But this is somebody that potentially could be managing a war. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so you want your best and your brightest in there. And uh, sometimes it's it's just time to uh, step down. Uh, well, this, a, this goes back to the power dynamics, because yeah. I, I personally, my intuition feels that he never really wanted to be president, that he did it because that was the position he found himself in at a time when it just worked out. And to maintain the power dynamic going on in D.C., the pressure is on. I don't think he even feels like he has a choice. I mean, that's yeah. just my personal opinion. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think it's valid. Uh, the one thing that I would say is here again, somewhat of a recent phenomenon now. Uh, politicians, in, in, especially in regard to the top of the ticket, the president, the presidency, politicians right now are winning on what's called the anti-vote. And quite frankly, uh, uh, Biden won on the anti-Trump vote. Uh -huh. And quite frankly, Trump very much benefited from the anti-Hillary vote. Yeah. And I could go on with this. There's two elections that stand out since Ronald Reagan uh, won very decisively in 1984. I, I believe the whole the whole map was red except for one state. <laughs> um, uh, certainly Bill Clinton came in in 1992. People voted for him. And I would say Obama in 2008, people voted for him. Mm -hmm. But for the rest of them, the, most of these elections have been, our guy isn't as bad as yours. It, it, and that's where we've yeah. gotten where it's yeah. pick the worst possible, you know, the least worst version of who's going to be in office. Yes. So in the back rooms, what's happening with the Democratic conversations? They got to know he's not going to stand up too well in a debate. The I don't think they I don't think they're going to I honestly think they're going to do everything they can to keep him out of debates, to keep him out of complex situations, to Absolutely. engineer. I mean, they're trying to bypass other candidates uh, and not even debate within the Democratic Party just to slide him right in and try to squeeze past the whole thing. Well, well, well they, they, they figure he's got to he's got to stand up on uh, during the general election and say Ooh. something. Good. I mean, there's going to come a point when he's going to have to face a candidate. Oh, yeah. But I think it's a, it's a matter of rolling the dice. It's like playing blackjack. You know, they're, they're yeah. trying to time it as well as possible. What if they really know that he's dangerously impaired? I honestly think that they've already talked about that. I mean, I, I, I can't imagine, I wouldn't have a lot of respect for them if they didn't actually have that conversation. Yeah. They already have plans lined up, which I think is interesting because I don't think that that they, that they necessarily are looking at um, Kamala Harris. Yeah. Um, but, you know, uh, I, that I that's a mystery to me. Yeah. The, I know that they're not particularly thrilled about Kamala being the choice either uh, because her points way down. If anything, they're lower than Biden's, and I don't even know how that's possible. It, yeah, uh, it doesn't surprise me at all. Okay, so all right, that's where they're at now. There's other things um, in the we'll stay with the Democrats and and, and let's say in, in contrast to Biden, RFK Jr. Mm -hmm. um, 
interesting person. Uh, yeah. uh, interesting. Uh, he doesn't fit the mold of the Kennedys uh, by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah. He's his own man. And there's things that he says that conservatives absolutely love. There's things that he says that liberals absolutely love. And uh, by a contrast, he says things that they both hate. Oh, what, yeah. And that, that puts him in an interesting position because most politicians, they figure out which boat they're going to be able to sail in. Mm -hmm. And he has an asset in that name that allows him some latitude that others don't have. And I think just from just from having observed him, he seems to actually really decide things based on what he feels and believes, which is is a privilege within the way our political system is arranged, because yeah. it's almost impossible to get into office without getting the funding. You can't get the funding if you don't pick sides. And so he's in a unique position. Uh, it's interesting. Yeah, I agree with a lot of what he says. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a little scared of him because, like I said, <laughs> I, I remember him from years past. Yeah. And he would come up with some off the wall things. Now, he, he seems to be more main, mainstream now. Mm -hmm. uh, he wrote the book about Fauci. And I know a lot of liberals don't like him uh, because of that. But he's interesting, interesting yeah. choice. Now, this is just a rumor, only a rumor. I want to stress I, I it's been going around online. That they've sent out floaters, they send out feelers for Michelle Obama, possibly stepping up. I believe that she could be a viable candidate. My only thing with going that direction would be this. I don't believe that in the United States that dynasties are a good thing. We had a Bush no. dynasty. We had a Bush dynasty. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a Clinton right. dynasty. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, by default, I think Biden, like you mentioned, he was ushered in on, uh, by his association with a very popular president. And if if Michelle would happen to get in there, we would buy, I'm going to say, let's say, call it a 12 year dynasty that we would have. And my thing is, I believe that both sides, but in particular, the Democrats, they need another Obama. They need another Bill Clinton. They need a fresh face. I think the country needs a fresh face on oh, both absolutely. sides. I, I would side. agree with that. I, I agree with that. that. That's the problem. The main problem that we have right now with politics is we've got so many people who've been around for a long time are stuck in their ways and owe everybody that, that has given them money favors. And then we've got some political dynasties, which is what you're referring to. And as much as I like Michelle Obama, the Clint, uh, the the Obamas are deeply ingrained in the political system. A lot of people don't realize that oh, yeah. Obama grew up knowing the Bushes. So, you know... We need fresh faces and we need people who are willing to speak sincerely and honestly about the severe and serious issues that we have in this country that our younger generations are facing and are very aware of that are not being addressed by the political parties. They're Absolutely. scared of those topics. Absolutely. Absolutely. Another name that gets floated around by the Democrats is Gavin Newsom. And uh, <laughs> you know what he reminds me of? Uh, Gavin Newsom reminds me. If you were to call on central uh, central cast, <laughs> this is so true. We need a used car salesman, you know, with, with the hair slicked back and the toothpick. Hey, mm -hmm. I got a deal for you. That, that, that's that's Gavin Newsom to me. OK. Yeah. Um, and uh, boy, his, I, I, he, his he, privilege he, walks ahead of him. That's one of my. Hmm. And and he's really good at, at I'll, I'll call it bullshitting. <laughs> he, he's really good at taking a statistics and he's, he's great for these per capita things, per capita, per capita, per capita. You know, you, you, you can point out that uh, California is falling into the sea and he will come up with some per capita thing about why it's better than uh, <laughs> New York. <laughs> <laughs> um, and those, I mean, by the way, that, that's that's the, one of the oldest tricks in the books. Per capita oh, sure. is only yeah. a numbers comparison. It does not, it, it doesn't take in any other factors. So, uh, what's your uh, what's your take on him? Uh, well, you know, I I think that he's a very good example of privilege sliding into office because he's related to Nancy Pelosi. And I, I don't think he paid his dues in the proper way that would have developed his skill set to have been an effective politician. And that's what happens when we get, um, uh, oh, what's the term they always use for kids of like famous people? 
not not narcissism. Oh, you know, uh, oh, nepotism. Nepotism. Thank yes. you. He's a great example of what happens when nepotism gets somebody into office faster than they than they deserve to be. Uh, so his he's good at flim flam like a car salesman, but when it comes to the depth and being sincere and honest and really caring about the serious issues, he's too caught up in the 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 systems that are in place that get politicians uh, in and staying in power. Yeah, yeah, I I, I can't imagine Gavin Newsom being a choice. Um, he's so far. I, and here again, yeah, a lot can happen in a year. You know, we're we're a year away from the election year, and uh, um, a lot can happen. That's an eternity in politics. But I got to tell you, I can't imagine getting uh, the Democratic Party and, and the general population uh, getting behind that guy. I just can't no. can't do it. Michelle Obama, I, I can see maybe. No, I can't. Uh, I can't. And I think she would probably be good, but we 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 need fresh and you, not attached fresh. and not deeply entrenched. Yeah, in, and I'll, I'll mention Hillary in the same regard. Uh, it, it just, you know, a lot of people have said maybe this is her time to get a, her, you know, her last ditch effort. But mm-hmm. I, I, I think it's time to. If I was if I was advising the Democratic Party, I'd say you need a fresh face. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's time to get away from Clinton, Obama, all that stuff. It, it's time to. You know, come up with something new and and more stimulating. Um, you know, getting back to age, because uh, I'm, I'm going to shift now to the Republican Party. Uh, Trump, for the most part, uh, seems cognitively very well together. Some people might say he's crazy, but that's a whole other thing. That's a whole other topic. <laughs> that's a whole other topic. He, he seems like uh, cognitively he's uh, he, he seems on board. Mitch mm-hmm. McConnell, you know, is having some issues, and here again, it's very sad. Uh, and I, uh, I get here again. Are I, you, can I just say that we're saying that it's very sad because we've been taught to look at aging as something to be I, sad about where I think it's, it's sad for the American people that the political system is in that situation absolutely. where somebody I, that I, old is still in office. I, I think it's very sad when quite literally being propped up at a podium. It, I, I think that's inhumane to the person that's being yeah. propped up. And it's certainly not good for the public. And this oh, is yeah, nothing against yeah. aging. You know what? No. Life runs its course. And there comes a time when you should just be sitting on the back porch, drinking some sweet tea uh, and enjoying, enjoying life and not be making decisions that are affecting millions of people. Well, your cognitive function, when you're cognitive, your physical, your mental uh, health is it becomes fragile. You shouldn't be in a decision making position. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, like I said, it's hard to tell the the headlines from uh, there's a like the onion. There's one called the Babylon Bee. And I love love the Babylon Bee. Okay, I I don't know the exact words. I'm paraphrasing here, but they had they had this image of this old man laying in bed and the the families gathered gathered around him. And the caption says family is uh, torn between uh, sending grandpa to hospice or having him run for Senate. (laughs) about them you know i'm not into i'm not into put specific parties or, yes. or you know uh people's personal beliefs but it, they're funny yes and uh um it's it's we're a country of 330 some odd million people i don't know what the exact number is but why why aren't our best and brightest up there why are we regurgitating the same people i i I, I don't understand that it was never my understanding of the way the government was set up was it was never meant to be a career. It's certainly not a career to the point where you served until you dropped like the Pope. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it, it, uh, uh, Congress, in terms of the House, that was always supposed to be a very limited, almost volunteer type thing. Mm-hmm. Senate was a little bit more maybe skilled politicians. Uh, but none of these things were supposed to be like you get elected when you're 40 or 50 and then you serve until you die. It, yeah. it, it was not supposed to be that. But uh, in a lot of respects that that you know, we can get into the conversation about term limitations and anything, we'll get to that at another time. But uh, right now, the, 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 the front runner with the Republican Party is, of course, Trump. Mm-hmm. And if you would have asked me three months ago, I would have said, yes, I know he can get the nomination, but I don't think he can win the general election. And now I'm not so sure. And I'll tell you why I'm not so sure is because the left is getting crazier and crazier. They're changing uh, the meaning of words and, and, oh, yeah. and, uh, and, and uh, championing causes that are just insane. 
these movements out in California where they're, uh, they're, they're, they're talking about bills that make it illegal for business owners to stop shoplifters. This is the type of thing. This is the type of BS that got him elected in, to begin with. Yeah. And it's and, the kind of thing that, well, they're notorious. They're becoming notorious for these kinds of crazy, it's almost like crazy schemes that have to involve special interest groups. Yeah. Have to, because they don't make, it doesn't make sense why they're being forced yeah. through without, without something like that. Yeah. So uh, if you would ask me now, I, I would still say it's unlikely. But three months ago, I said it's impossible. But uh, mm-hmm. but now I'm going to say, you know what, that 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 light. Uh, one of the guys on uh, CNN made the, the thing about uh, he was a joke in 2016, but that steam engine kept getting closer and closer and getting bigger and bigger. And here again, three months ago, I said, there's no way Trump, but I, I'll tell you now that steam engine is, get, is getting louder and, and the ground is starting to rumble a little bit. I do believe I, I can't rule out another Trump presidency. I can't. Yeah, I, I, well, I will say I don't I don't foresee that that necessarily happening. But right. I think what has happened in that three months is that the attacks and the the organized effort to go after him um for things that other people have been guilty of and didn't get any kind of, of this kind of level of, of scrutiny and, you know, all yeah. the, all the stuff that's been going on that level, it tipped over into people being like, you know, are, why haven't we arrested other previous presidents for some of the things that they've exactly. done? And that's what's caused uh, people to shift back into his favor. Oh, well, a lot of uh, presidents have lo- uh, have done far worse. I mean, oh, they've, they've manipulated uh, taxpayer uh, funds. They've sent uh, our brave men and women into uh, situations where they were a certain amount of them are surely going to die mm-hmm. uh, in terms of our armed forces to advance the uh, interests of the United States. And sometimes, uh, you know, the, the idea, the last moral war, if there is such a thing, I guess you could say Hitler had to be stopped. But some of the other things that have gone on in the last 20 years, I really question the motives of oh, of, some of, yeah. uh, of, of all of the, uh, the the expenditure of both life and capital has been enormous. It has just been enormous. And what have we gotten for it? Yeah. War uh, makes people a lot of money. And that's one yeah, of the things a lot of people exactly don't right. understand. They don't understand that's how it. powerful the companies are that make a fortune when war happens. Yeah. Interestingly, you said uh, about, um, you know, the, the, I'll say, persecution of Trump. And here again, I'm not saying he's innocent. That's not yeah, what I'm saying. I don't think that, that's not either one of us are saying. It's, no, that, I, it's, it's I, over the top. Yes, it's, it's, he's basically, basically guilty of political shenanigans. Some of them illegal, but they are political shenanigans. And um, Vladimir Putin, I don't know if you, he was on TV the other day at, at a major thing. And he said the the United States has lost its right to lecture anybody about the morality of their government or democracy uh, because of what's happening with Trump. And he 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 claims he's indifferent. He said it's probably benefiting him for Trump to be you know uh, where he's at. But uh, in all honesty, the the room that he was in, I heard laughter in the background. So uh, he's not wrong. He he's not wrong, and I'm not I'm not saying that uh, Vladimir Putin is somebody that we should aspire to, but just because he is who he is doesn't mean he's wrong. <laughs> you know, if he likes pizza, that doesn't mean you're bad. If you like pizza too, uh, the truth is the truth, and I, I don't know. And this is something that I'm hearing. I I follow creators from all over the world, mm-hmm. Europe in particular, is very frustrated with the United States right now. Well, who's surprised by that? We're barely functioning over here. You know, yeah. it's, it's a, there, we've got serious problems. I did an episode on it recently, and so some of the statistics I was looking at were my, mind blowing. Yeah. But um, yeah, when we start to be questioned like that by foreign powers, we're in a serious situation. And I think the only way to really shake that up is to bring fresh faces into politics. Absolutely. Uh, another person that's uh, kind of uh, on the Republican side that I'm not necessarily opposed to yet. Uh, you know, these it takes a while for their for these candidates to evolve, for more to come out about them and hear them talk over a period of time and so forth. But Vivek Ramaswamy, um, I kind 
I, I, I kind of like him. You're chuckling. Is there an impression that you have of him that you'd like to share? Uh, you know, I, I kind of liked him for entertainment purposes because we needed, we needed someone colorful and funny. Uh, but there's something, you know, just intuitively, there's something there that I think, um, you know, it's about, uh, fame and money and power. That's just what my intuition tells me is that that might be at the root of, of, of the reasons for choosing to run, but, you know, I, I didn't make a study of him, so I don't want to make that as a blanket statement. Yeah, if you're going to research him, you'd want, you'd want to hear, you'd want to check out where his grant for education came from. You'd want to check out that story. Mm-hmm. And you'd also want to check how he made his money. A lot of that money is through financial investments in biotech. Mm-hmm. And from what I understand, a lot of those things have been invested um, by some really big powerhouses uh, in terms of like Vanguard and some of those others, Blackwater. I'm not sure who, which one of them is Black all Rock. involved. Blackrock. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, 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 uh, okay. Blackwater is the uh, uh, security firm. Oh yeah. 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 I know exactly who they are. I was like, <laughs> mm, close, but not quite. <laughs> we need to do it. We need to do an episode talking about Vanguard and Blackrock. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Because Typically, when people talk about corporate interests, they pick on Ford and Google and all the and and they all got their problems. But I'm telling you, it's kind of like the Game of Thrones. The White Walkers are oh. Vanguard. <laughs> yeah, I mean, when you see and I've showed this to my students at school at the school I teach at, I teach uh, uh, adults uh, at college, and uh, I show them how much the, the vested interests they have across almost every corporation on the S and P 500, and they're like. And I'm like, yeah, basically everything yeah. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. So anyway, I, I, I would consider him. I absolutely would consider him. Um, and I guess probably the other player that kind of has a chance. And, and you know what's interesting about him when he won big in Florida, he was kind of crowned the new leader of the Republican Party. But that kind of uh, fizzled out. And Ron DeSantis is kind of just kind of hanging there. Yeah, um, he's not I, very he's still likable. Alive. He's still alive, but he's, <laughs> he's not catching fire. Yeah, um, is that kind of your assessment? He's just not very likable. Yeah, he's he comes across as disingenuous and not very likable. It's as if he's always alone in a crowd. And I'm not saying that he's not. I don't know him personally, just as not as a communications pioneer. My observations of people are are pretty accurate, and I I think the, his issue is that he just doesn't come across as that likable uh, yeah. and that trustworthy. And that's yeah. a, that. That's not a, to say that that I'm saying for a fact he's not. It's about it's about the energy that somebody gives off and the impression that people take from it. And sometimes you can do that can happen with people simply because they're an introvert or they're not comfortable talking about certain aspects of their life. Like there's reasons sometimes, but in politics, coming across as not totally transparent uh, and disingenuous is a huge problem. Absolutely. So that's where we're at. Um, I I don't know that any of the people that we talked about, Republican or Democrat, at this time stand out Uh -uh. um, as somebody. This is going to be the person. I'm muddy. I'm just not getting it. Um, I have a feeling this is one of the few elections, uh, and I'm not 21 years old anymore. This is one of the few elections, as much as people talked about Reagan starting a war with with the then USSR and all these other things. I was really never really that concerned. Um, Even in, even post nine 11, I was never really that concerned about the future of the United States, but with the way things are shaping up in the world right now, Mm -hmm. you have in here again, this is another subject that's very big, but, uh, the way that monet- monetization and uh, uh, different currencies are valued is radically starting to change. Oh, yeah. And we're not in front of the eight ball. Yes. And uh, that could be big for the United States because the one thing the United States has always done, and if anything, it's been to our detriment. Yeah. Is we've shown the dollar and said, you do what we say or we're mm-hmm. taking our dollar and we're going home. Just like a kid that owns the ball. And all the other countries would quake in their shoes. Oh, no, because no matter what it was, pesos, euros, whatever, yeah. everything was, well, how many dollars is is it worth? 
that was the standard. Okay. Yeah. And that's starting to change. And that that is one of the, the one of my biggest concerns about where we've been headed the last few years is the fact that we've become so caught up in the drama of whatever issues being thrown out to keep us like rabbit dogs running after, oh, oh, here's that issue that they love to throw out every, you know, few months when mm-hmm. they need this distracted, is that all that distraction while the political you know, candidates have not evolved and have not become um, uh, very, in, they're not in touch with the problems that we really have and or nor how to fix them is that while we were lost in the woods, other countries have leapt forward and seize what they see as an opportunity to take some of the power out of us. And that is that is the, the concern is that we're losing our place within the and that goes back to our president and to the hot mess that we've been for a few years. Uh, yes. And I, I think we have it in us to come back and to rally because we're so good at that. America is so good at that. But we do need to wake the F up. Yeah, absolutely. I totally agree. So that's where we're at. We're going to have to do this again. We're going to have to keep checking in with each other and following the progress of this. I have a feeling, like I said, this next year could be very interesting. I actually have some fears, I guess, or concerns, very serious concerns, maybe not fears yet, that I've never had before going into this new election cycle. So some crazy politics are at work, some crazy things happening in our society and crazy things happening around the world, crazy things happening with the world banking system. Um, and these are challenges since World War II that the United States has really never had to deal with before. So it's going to be interesting. Uh, before we leave, I, you and I have always have a good amount of crosstalk with our uh, audiences. Uh, Why don't you tell folks about where they can find you online and about your podcast? Absolutely. Uh, You guys can find uh, links to all of the books and content that I do, uh, including my podcast, The Shaman Isis Show, on my website, shamanisis.com. And while you're there, check out my new book. Awesome. And what's the name of the book? Uh, It's called Memory Mansion. Okay, well, we're we're gonna have to do an episode about that because uh, I've been checking that out, uh, the bits and pieces online, and your uh, w- your build up to the release of that, and it, it looks very fascinating. I gotta say, thank you. Uh, you can find the Billy D's podcast pretty much anywhere podcasts are found. We're on all the major carriers, and uh, uh, I've never really uh, sought video views necessarily. I mean, I do the YouTube thing because a lot of times guests want to be seen, so they 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 grab a link off of there and they share it in their sh- social media and so forth. But another place you can find some of our video content, not every episode is is uh, in video form, but another place you can find it is the old Twitter, which is now X. Mm-hmm. Um, we are now doing long form content, much like Tucker Carlson, I believe Roseanne. Uh, there's a number of different people doing long form content on uh, Twitter X right now. And uh, if you've been following that, I, I, I don't always agree with Tucker, everything Tucker says. That's not where I'm going with this. But his numbers are incredible. Love that. I mean, I mean he's absolutely burying all three uh, major uh, cable news networks with his uh, X account. It, it, I love that. I just love that. I'm smiling because I love, I love, I like Tucker Carlson. I yeah. just like him as an individual. His energy is great. And I've watched him really, really pivot. Uh, with, with with his evolution and understanding what's really going on. Yeah. I have mad respect for it. So good for him. Absolutely. And uh, this could be a new age. I don't know that it's going to happen necessarily with Twitter X, but I think the way we take in news is uh, if I was a cable news network right now, I'd be nervous. Mm-hmm. Because oh, yeah. uh, I, I think the day of major media making its move to social media is, it's, a, it's a wonder it took as long as it did. Quite frankly. Uh, so, but it's starting to happen now. So we here at the podcast, we're definitely part of that trend and long form content is now available uh, at Billy D's on X, which is the old Twitter shaman. Always a pleasure to have you on the program. Thank you so much for co-hosting today. Absolutely. I, I always have a wonderful time with you, Billy. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. And we are going to do this again. Thank you very much for listening to our podcast. And we will be talking to you again next week. Oh. 
I'm Billy Dees and host of the self-titled podcast, The Billy Dees Podcast. We are primarily an interview and a commentary-based podcast featuring authors and creators talking about their craft, advocates for community issues, and myself and an array of co-hosts discussing current events. There's no partisan ranting and raving going on here, just great content. You can find The Billy Dees Podcast on your favorite platform and on Twitter at Billy Dees. Thank you, and I hope you listen in. With lucky landslots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to... Has anyone seen the bride and groom? Sorry, sorry, we're here. We were getting lucky in the limo and we lost track of time. No, Lucky Land Casino, with cash prizes that add up quicker than a guest registry. In that case, I pronounce you lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Daily bonuses are waiting. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Every day, my company gets scam phishing emails trying to get money or sensitive info. I wanted to protect my employees and my clients, so I checked out CISA's Secure Our World. They've got simple ways we can protect our businesses from online threats. First, teach employees to recognize and report phishing. Next, require strong passwords plus multi-factor authentication. And finally, turn on automatic updates for your business software. To learn more, go to CISA at cisa.gov forward slash secure our world.